before we start this video, a large thank you to Hades, Solid, Slothful, and Gath Ewanson for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And as always, an immense thank you to Halo Burner for their continued support to the channel this month on Patreon. It is sincerely appreciated, my friend. You are a legend, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello, everybody. I initially intended this to be one video, but it ended up being so long I have to cut it into two because there are so many other small branching systems, mostly to do with UI. However, the source code for this episode will also contain the source code for the next episode. Just wanted to say that before we start. With that being said, let's begin. Hello, everybody. So let's hop on over to the take build up effect. You can see the first line. If the character is already poisoned, simply return. We don't have a flag for that. So let's start the video by making that flag. And if you want all characters to be poison, you want to put this in the character network manager. So the base class inherits this. And I'm going to put it under flags right under is rolling. I'm going to have here is poisoned. So we're making this check so we don't apply any of the poison effects more than once. What we're going to do here now is right at the top under this comment, we're going to say if the character dot character network manager is poisoned dot value simply return. Okay, cool. Now, if the character is over their buildup limit, apply the new timed effect poison. Well, we don't have the effect yet, but we can check for the buildup limit. We're going to say if character dot character network manager poison buildup, because you know this is checking for poisoned, if that value is above the character's buildup limit, which is character dot character network manager dot build capacity dot value, then we know we can actually apply the effect. So as for the effect itself, First, we say character dot character network manager poison buildup dot value is equal to zero. We want to eradicate all buildup once you actually become affected by the status. And then we're going to say character dot character network manager is poisoned dot value is equal to true. So this stops you from accruing any more buildup while you're already poisoned because it doesn't make sense. You're already poisoned. There should be no more buildup. And under this, we're going to make a comment, create the poisoned effect. Okay, this will be our first actual status effect. So let's go back to the project. I am going to go into scripts. I'm going to go into effects. And I'm going to go into timed because this will act as a timed effect. I'm going to create a new mono behavior script and I'm going to call this poisoned effect. So lots of games handle poison differently. Uh, I'm going to make it very generic, but I'm going to give you the space to totally make it a bit different and customize it. So we're first going to delete the start and update functionality. And then I am going to Drop in my namespace as is per tradition. I am going to make this derive from the time to character effect class, and I'm going to give it a create asset menu uh, thing here so we can actually create it in our project. I'm going to say menu name is equal to character effects slash timed effects slash poisoned or poison effect. Now for the variables, let's make a private int for poison damage. And honestly, you would just need this if you're not going to go any further than, I believe, Elden Ring, because I think poison is pretty consistent in that game. But you can make a private bool here, and you can make one for poison damage has been calculated. And this is what I do in Nephilim, because I have a myriad of factors that will determine the poison damage, um, and even the time in which it takes for this poison damage to tick. So we have process effect here. This is pretty normal. Um, we have the base process effect, but we're going to erase that, and we're going to go back to the base class. And we're going to copy it because we're going to do it a little bit different. We want to make a couple extra checks here. It's not just a regular time effect. So, for example, we have the time effect incrementing down. Yes, that is totally normal. But then we have the time remaining on effect less than equal to zero. Or if the character is dead, remove the effect. We don't want to keep incurring the poison effect if the character is dead. Now, if the poison damage has not been calculated, and again, you don't need this, but if you want to add it, you can. We're just going to call a function. And we're going to say poison damage has been calculated is equal to true. The function in question we're going to make right here called private void calculate poison damage. And what this allows you to do is that if you have some modifiers on your character, like poison damage percent modifier or uh, poison damage timer, yada, 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 you can basically modify all that in this little function and it can be different for every single character. You could even store a, a variable on here uh, for the character who caused the poison damage. And then you could modify it further with that. So this just gives you a bit more creative freedom, but for now I'm gonna say poison damage is equal to 10. I'll make it pretty high because when I test it, I want the character to die quickly to make sure it works. Um, but yeah, you can just make a static number. I'm pretty sure that's what Elden Ring does, but there is a bit of room there to customize it. 
Now, if the character dot character network manager is not poisoned, we want to also remove the effect because maybe you have an effect where you rest it up at a marked site of grace and it removes it by removing the poison flag. Maybe you drink a potion that turns the is poison flag to false. Regardless, however you're doing it, if we're ever changing that is poison flag to false, you want to instantly remove this effect. So we're going to say private void process poison damage. Now we're going to make this require a character, up type character manager, and we're going to say process poison damage, and we're going to pass the character, just like so. Okay, that's basically it for that. Uh, under the process poison damage, though, we're going to call one last function that doesn't exist character dot character effect manager. Let me check my notes here. Uh, process poison damage, and this requires a build up type. Um, sorry, the poison damage and the time remaining on the effect. Okay, now let's go over. I'm gonna this straight from Nephilim. I'm gonna copy this and go to my character effects manager, and we're gonna create that function. So this is gonna be pretty straightforward. We're basically just going to subtract some health amongst other things here. So let's make a comment poison, public void, process poison damage. And the reason why we're giving it its own little function is because we're not gonna play a death animation all the time and I'll show you why. So let's make this int poison damage and int time remaining on effect. Very good. Actually, I don't think we need that time remaining on effect. I think that's a Nephilim only thing. I'm probably going to erase that. So disregard that time remaining on effect right now. That's my bad. Uh, we just need the poison damage. If the character is not the owner return, you only need this if you're syncing uh, these effects on server RPCs. Like right now on the Elden Ring tutorial, we're not ever actually calling this if we're not the owner, but if you're syncing these effects with server RPCs, do a check here. If the character is dead, simply return. Then we're going to say character dot character network manager. We're going to say current health dot value minus equals poison damage. Now, we have to do a couple of checks. So I mentioned before we don't want to play a death animation under certain circumstances. Why is that? Well, we're going to say if character dot current health dot value is you could say less than or equal zero, then you can do some stuff, but I'm gonna say if it's greater or equal to one, I'm gonna simply return. And then if it is obviously zero or less, we want to check for a few things. The first thing I wanna check for is if our character is being critically damaged. The reason we're doing this is because if we're poisoned while being backstabbed or reposted, we don't wanna play the dead animation in the middle of being reposted or being backstabbed. That would break the sequence and look kinda of ugly. So we're gonna say character.characternetworkmanager is poison is equal to false. And then we're gonna say character dot character network manager. What we're gonna do here is say is dead is equal to true. So we're also going to do a character dot character animator manager here, and we're gonna play a death animation, but only if we're not being critically damaged. So we're gonna play dead 01, that's our generic death animation. And we'll say true, we are interacting, we can't do anything once we're in that. And now, regardless if we're playing the animation or not, our character is dead and we are poisoned. So put these above here like so. Or we're not poisoned anymore, sorry. Uh, and what we can do also actually is we can open up some curly brackets here and we can put the dead animation here. We're gonna say if we're not being critically damaged and we won't do a return step, we'll just do it this way. So if we're not being critically damaged, play a death animation. Regardless though, we're still setting our poisoned to false and we're setting our is dead to true. So now, we need to create the poison effect. We just did that. We can now instantiate it. So we need to actually call this as a variable. We're gonna say poison effect, poison is equal to world character effects manager dot instance. And then we're gonna say dot poison effect. This doesn't exist yet, obviously. We haven't made a variable, so let's comment this line out for now. And then we can go actually make that a variable on the world character effects manager. I have an error, what of an error? Right, I didn't delete this time not effect. And it's a float and we don't need it. Um, so over here on process poison damage, delete this, that's my bad. That is a remnant from Nephilim, we don't need this here. Let's go over to our function and delete this really quickly again too. Okay, now let's save it. Now let's go back into the project and now we should be able to go to our world character effects manager. Uh, oh, first we need to create the effect. Let's go to timed effects and do that. Uh, right click. Uh, character effects, timed effects, and then do a poison effect. I'm just gonna name it poison. Actually, I name it poisoned effect, there we go. And let's go to the world effects manager, like I said before, 
and let's create a variable for that and then drag it in. So I'm gonna make a header for this because maybe you have more buildup effects that you have in the future uh, or status effects rather. So I'm gonna call it status effects. I think another one that's timed in Elden Ring is I believe Frostbite modifies your stamina regeneration or something for a while. So we could do that one in the future too if you guys wanted to see it. Uh, poison effect, there we go. And let's drag that in here. Now you'll notice we have no timed effects list. And that's bad because now that we have more than one, both are going to share the same ID. So we don't want that. You can see effect ID zero, effect ID zero. Now you could manually enter these, but it's very dangerous and it's prone to human error. So let's just make a list of timed effects like so. And let's just change, I've copied the static effects here. I'm just gonna change the keyword static to timed. And what we're gonna do is do the exact same thing we do for our instant static effects. We're gonna assign these IDs and how are we gonna do that? Well, under here you see our generate effect IDs. We're just gonna do a for loop and loop through them and give them the ID of their point in the list. So very simple, very straightforward. I do the same thing in Nephilim. There we go. So we're setting the timed effect ID to whatever it is in the list. All right. Now go down here and drag both of these in. I'll drag them in the order I created them, not that it matters. And there we go. Now if I go and press play, you can see here that effect ID is zero, but then it's gonna to change to zero and one, just like so. So that is working, cool, awesome. All right, let's stop the game and go back over into our Visual Studios. Let's go to take build effect, and now we can uncomment out our line of code that is referencing the poison effect. Very good. I'm gonna set the default length of the effect to, uh, we'll say 120, and I'm gonna say time remaining on effect is 120, um, just for testing. Okay, so now let's go down here and let's say character dot character effects manager. We're gonna say add time to effect, and we are going to add the poison effect. All right, now right below that, we want to make a reference to the player manager, and we're not going to do this in this video. We're going to get through the satisfacts first, but I'm going to show you what I would do. We're going to say if the player uh, is null return, and if you're not the owner, that's if you're doing these on a server RPC, and this is playing on both ends, simply return. But if you don't want your character to be affected by stati status effects, or any character for that matter, multiple times in a row, you can do this on a character, not just a player. So we don't want our character to become continually affected by status effects very quickly if it just happened. For example, if I bleed a boss in three hits, I don't wanna bleed the boss in three hits again. I want it to be in four or five, and I want it to keep increasing. Or maybe you don't, but if you do, what you wanna do is add a temporary resistance to these elements that will last a time. Now, I'm not gonna cover this here because it's quite extensive, but if you guys want me to make a video on it, I can. But this is what I do in Nephilim. Uh, if I bleed a boss, the next time to bleed them, it will be a little more difficult, and so on and so on. That compounds, and it only lasts like a couple minutes. So let's go to the character network manager, though. We're gonna move on really quickly. And we're going to make a public void for on is poison changed. And we're going to call this function every time the is poisoned network flag is changed. We're going to call this regardless if you're on a player, an AI character, or whatever. It should be called everywhere if you want the effects to be visible. So what we want to do is obviously change the HP bar color and play a little particle effect. So over on the character effects manager, the base class, under VFX, I'm gonna make one for status effects, just in case you wanna add more. Maybe you want like a chilling effect for frostbite or something. But regardless, I'm going to make a public variable that I'm gonna hide in the inspector. And I am going to make it so that it is a public game object. And I'm gonna call it poisoned VFX. Now we can jump back to our network, or sorry, the world character effects manager. And we can make a prefab for this. And I'm gonna make very rudimentary, simplistic, just some simple particles so we know it works, but you can take the time to make this cool. Let's make a, or call this poison VFX. What we're gonna do is instantiate it somewhere on the character every time they're poisoned and delete it when they're not. So we're going to say if is poison dot value, and then we're gonna say else. And if we are poisoned, what we're gonna do is we want to instantiate these effects. But first we want to check to make sure they're not already there. So we're gonna say if character dot character effects manager poisoned VFX does not equal null, well then we know we don't want to do anything, so let's return because we already have that effect instantiated. Otherwise, we're gonna continue on and say game object poison VFX is equal to instantiate, and then we can just grab that variable we just made here on the character effects manager, the world character effects manager, and I want to position that at my character's lock on transform personally, because that's usually in the heart of my character. 
and where the effect is most noticeable. But if you want to make it a function for doing this at different parts, depending on the character, that's cool too. This is pretty universal, and I'm just going to set the local position to vector 3.0 and the local transform to quaternion.identity, which again is just going to zero everything out and uh, put it right where it needs to be. So optionally, you can make a particle system that uses a skin mesh render or and selects the character's body, and then it makes the particles rise out. And I've copied some code here from Nephilim uh, if you want to take it. The null obviously is the part you want to fill in. But I'm not going to do that in this video. This basically makes it so if you have particle effects, they trace the outline of a character's body or a part that you want it on. Now, if we're not poisoned, we want to check for the effect. And if it is null, simply return. It's already been deleted. Otherwise, we want to delete it. Again, I'm going to give you another option, though, that I do in Nephilim for polish. I make a special manager for all these effects. And I don't like deleting them because it pops away the effect instantly. I like fading it out. So what it does is I stop the particle effects from playing. And when they're all done and their lifespan is, uh, has reached zero and they've all faded, then I destroy the object. So again, this, this goes beyond the barrier of functionality. This is a polish element. It takes more time to do this. I'm going to lay out the actual functionality in this video. I won't do things like this unless you want me to and I can revisit it, let me know. But I just like giving you some ideas too because this is stuff that I do. This is the stuff that takes a lot more time. Uh, you know, you add in things that you think it looks nice. So I created a script on the VFX called a function to end it. I wait for the particles to all be dead and then I destroy it. And also I have a sound effect manager on there and I lower the volume over time and fade it out. You know, all these little things add up to a nicer effect. But for now we will save and we will continue onward. So let's go to the player network manager now and we're gonna override that uh, is poison effect. And the reason why we wanna do that is because we have to call something else too as the player locally. We have to call a pop-up of sorts to let us know, hey, you've been poisoned. I mean, you don't really need to do that because your HP bar is going to change color as well. We're going to get to that, but Elden Ring has the pop-up and the pop-up is also nice. It's very in your face. So we're going to say, if the player is not the owner for now, just simply return. And then we're going to modify this. And also, if you want to as well, um, you could go to the base class, of course, and copy and paste these, uh, what you've done before. And you might want to do it differently. Like all this logic here, I can just take this like so, and I can instead of calling base on it's changed, which calls the base logic, I can paste this here. We don't call the base function, we change some things. Uh, and if you wanted to use the character variable, by the way, just go to the character network manager and make this protected instead of private. And there we go. So for now though, all this for me is going to be pretty much the same. I'm not gonna touch it. I whoop, didn't mean to take a screenshot. I am going to modify this function further by adding some more logic. So we're gonna say player UI manager dot instance uh, pop-up manager. And we don't have a function for this yet, but we're gonna make one. And this function will work with all of our feature status effects. So we're going to say send status effect pop-up. And we're going to make it require a build-up so we know which status effect it is. And I'm just going to say dot poison for now because we know that this is the poison pop-up. Now over on our player UI pop-up manager, I am going to make this function I was talking about. So let's just say public void send status effects pop-up like so, build-up. And then we can say status Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you learned something today. This is a great place to stop. We will continue in the next video. We will finish this effect. A special thank you to my patrons. Is it because if any of you this series can exist at all, you have my immense gratitude. A special thank you to people who share the series via word of mouth, who like and comment on the videos. It's because of all of you that we can keep doing this. So that will be all for me today. I hope you all have a very lovely weekend.